So how we came up with this idea was actually yesterday, Steve texted me about some ideas for yeah. kidney function in, mm -hmm. in regards to Boston Lloyd. Right. And I didn't know one of the subjects he was talking about, which was an alpha blocker for uh, people with prostate issues, which one day we should do an episode on prostate issues also. Yeah. But um, so alpha blockers ease the ability for, I thought it was an alpha agonist, by the way, but they ease the ability for people to urinate mm -hmm. uh, that have enlarged prostates, which is one of the consequences of having androgens yeah. long term. So one of the reasons some people might want to use finasteride early. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, you were you you had some wonderful thoughts on that. But then we talked about uh, allopurin allopurinol, mm -hmm. and I was mentioning how I was very fond of allopurinol. I always have it because... Basically, when your AMP kinase is activated, which is this uh, gene transcription pathway involved in, it's a nutrient sensing gene transcription pathway. Basically, what you want to turn on during fasting, mm -hmm. your uric acid levels will rise. And so, for example, even if you're taking metformin, if you're not a bodybuilder, you're not taking steroids, you're not eating protein like I am, mm -hmm. my uric acid levels will be high, slightly high all the time. Oh, and this right. is an annoying aspect because yeah. mm -hmm. you're trying to get, you're trying to be healthy by turning on the AMP kinase, trying to stop yourself from growing mm -hmm. between the age of 20 and 60 or so, mm -hmm. because those are the years in which after that you want to actually to 60? On. The reason why after 60, mm -hmm. mTOR oh, being turned on is, okay. yeah. is very, uh, very useful for your heart health, right. especially mm -hmm. and brain health. Um, still probably bad for cancer development, but the point is, um, uh, protein consumption has been shown in epi epidemiologic studies. A higher protein consumption above the age of 60 is associated with less mortality. So that's that's why mm -hmm. that's why we think so. But at least from 20 to 60, basically the years that you guys want to have fun, mm -hmm. I'm trying to turn off the AMP kinase, but I don't want this huge risk factor to come about, which is hyperuricemia. Right. So I wanted to introduce to the audience, I mean, nobody in bodybuilding has ever talked about this issue before in history. No. It's never been talked about. No. And basically, the, the, short, the short of it is that uric acid, so uric acid is produced by all, all mammals, at least. Mm -hmm. um, in, in all mammals except humans and higher level primates, the uric acid is dealt with by, a, by an enzyme called uricase, meaning that they don't mm -hmm. pee out that uric acid the way mm -hmm. we do. They metabolize it. Yeah, they metabolize it with this enzyme called uricase. Mm -hmm. So, which is, and I'm, anyway, so the interesting thing is that we then have higher levels of uric acid. And mm -hmm. the shocking thing is that uric acid is associated with, uh, let's begin with the first one, insulin resistance. We, I, I don't have citations for you guys now. I mean, I actually, I actually, I actually do on my paper in front of me. But yeah. so it's associated with NAFLD, okay? And it's associated with not just with NAFLD, no, that's non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Mm -hmm. Your uric acid levels are associated with that, but they're mm -hmm. also associated with hepatic um, uh, damage from NAFLD. So if you oh, have yeah. NAFLD and mm -hmm. you have higher uric acid levels, which means more than in the US metrics we have, uh, the range will probably be between like three and seven. Mm -hmm. And the studies will consider above six to be higher uric acid levels, yeah. almost hyperuricemia. And I try to keep mine below five. Okay, yeah. so I actually try to keep mine like 4.5 or four at max. What so, is your BUN and creatinine? Well, because you know they're all related to protein metabolism and and CPK and stuff. Are those low as well or elevated? What what? No, they're they're medium. Like the creatinine mm -hmm. is like one point one or one point zero or something. Yeah. Because something I've, like that. I've never seen my uric acid over five and a half. And it's usually oh, okay. around along the uh, bottom of the reference range. So a lot of that has to do with genetic polymorphisms. Yeah. So you may be and and food you eat you don't eat fructose. Fructose is very sometimes, much associated with yeah, that. Yeah, so some people yeah. think some some people think that it's all protein because the main thing that uric acid does is cause gout, as people know. Yeah. And gout, by the way, has been it's a disease of the Middle Ages, but it's been tremendously rising in in the last thirty years. Dehydration also, you know. Yeah, potentially, but we think it's because of the high fructose corn syrup and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so when people have gout, they have to be worried about meat, but they also have to be worried about fructose. You're, you might just have genetic polymorphisms that protect you. There's a lot of, a lot of SNPs associated with hyperuricemia uh, yeah. and associated with gout. So my dad, so, my dad has gout a, a while back. Yeah, I told him, start drinking more water. I asked, how much water do you drink? Yeah, I drink coffee and wine. Interesting. Yeah. yeah if poor uh, poor diet models, my parents. Um, so, so just start drinking more water and it was resolved, you know? 
So, so it's associated with that NAFLD, hepatic mm. damage due to NAFLD. It's associated with insulin resistance and yeah. the transition from insulin resistance to type two diabetes in the mm. early stages. Yeah. It's associated with cardiovascular disease strongly, with arterial disease, with heart dysfunction. It's associated with uh, what else? I have some notes that I wrote down. Right. Uh, hypertension, of course. It's high, highly associated with hypertension. I didn't know that. With, okay. with the movement from prehypertension to hypertension. Okay. So. So I just wanted to mention that for people to know that this is something to look out for. You know, when we talk about ancillaries that you're using when you're on um, uh, hormones and stuff like that, if you're living an unhealthy lifestyle, you don't want your uur uric acid to be 5.5. You want it to be 4.5. If you don't mm. want it to be 6, you definitely don't want it to be 8. No. So this is a marker that people are not usually checking. And, and blood tests usually check it naturally, but people are not paying attention to it. And they have to know that like, for example, uh, homocysteine, it is an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease. So it's not mm -hmm. just your LDL cholesterol and your blood pressure and stuff like that. Even if your blood pressure is fine, if you have high uric acid levels. And so there are, there are the drug that, um, that Steve mentioned to me yesterday is called allopurinol. That's mm -hmm. honestly what I use personally. Okay. Allopurinol is the most effective at the higher doses. Yeah. But there is there's a there are other drugs and other classes of drugs and one of them which I don't remember the name it's Febu, F E B U X O S T A T, that's a newer drug approved mm. in I think 2009. My friend with gout takes that yeah. because yeah. that is less excreted by the kidneys. Mm. Oh, I didn't mention renal disease. Higher uric acid levels yeah, are yeah. associated with, with, with renal disease, mm, with developing it's another, another marker of a kidney function, you know. So. Ex exactly. It was first, it was first, uric acid was first isolated in, la in the late 1700s from kidney stones. Yeah. So you're peeing this out constantly. So it's putting stress on your kidneys. Mm. And it's associated with the development of initial stages of chronic kidney disease. Yeah. And kidney stones. It's one of the building blocks for yes. kidney stones besides the. Um, calcium magnesium and that kind of stuff that's found within yeah. so that's why we came to allopurinol because that is usually prescribed in cases of kidney stones to clear out the uric acid exactly. and it has uh, some application to um shorten the detection time of certain performance enhancing drugs that's like, that's what steve was teaching me about yesterday i never knew about that at all yeah, which is very interesting we shouldn't talk about this on the podcast but <laughs> so 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 <laughs> there's a protocol attached which i won't share ha huh. Yeah, yeah. I'll start doing ebooks also. This is the way to go. Yeah. So, but really, actually, it's they're very valuable for people. I think the ebooks. Uh, people don't like when they watch a long video that's complicated. Mm -hmm. They don't like to take notes. So actually, yeah. it's really helpful. Even on videos I've already made, I'm going to make ebooks on those yeah, videos. So that that's what I did because I, so in some of the ebooks, I literally talked about everything in one form or another. You know, man, mm -hmm. but I go way more in depth and and explain it. You know, and that's why everybody that buys it said, "Dude, these are the most comprehensive." Now, that's yes. why I put it in the title. <laughs> well, Steve, well, that's why we work together also, because right. Steve is very analytical. Nobody else in the bodybuilding world is very analytical these days. Yeah. I mean, there are yeah. people that are that are thought to be analytical. I'm not going to mention names, mm -hmm. but they're really not. They just hear things from other people and they yeah. pay attention. Or, or they really don't put the full information out there. Like, you know, I have the full information in the private Facebook group, but it was not popular. So I'm not not translating it to ebooks, and then you know it will be available in ebooks, which some some of them have like double information because when you talk about growth hormone and anti obesity drug, for example, that will also the anti obesity drug will also be found in the fat burning ebook, right? And the, and yeah. the liraglutide and the dulaglutide uh, GLP one receptor agonist in the insulin ebook because it goes through the insulin pathway is also discussed in the fat burning. I'm, I'm trying to plug my- And eventually, by the way, eventually- e -book. <laughs> No, you should, you should plug it. And eventually you should uh, compile the eBooks eventually and, and print it as, it, as it as a written book later, mm. like in a few years, because uh, that will be, be long last- It will be over 2000 pages. Yeah, I know, but it would be cool. It would be cool to have a, a printed book. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, by the way, I wanted to tell you, your friend Dante Trudell is now uh, going to become my friend. It seems he sent me a lot oh, of really? messages. Yeah, yeah, he sent me a lot. Good. So he revealed he revealed to me that uh, remember how I got upset with him about that kidney stack? Yeah, yeah. So he revealed to me that this was not a kidney stack. In fact, he had sent that gentleman who will remain mm. nameless um, just supplements to help with his health in general. Yeah. I'm not going to get into details and reveal what he said to me yeah. on the messages, but mm -hmm. the point is he sent him supplements in general 
to help with his health, right. not for his kidneys specifically. Mm -hmm. Just a couple of them were supposed to be for the kidneys. And that guy, being so dim-witted, released the the whole thing and titled it Kidney Stack. Yeah. So 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 he's messaged me recently with like uh, two pages of messages. I haven't even gone back to him fully yet, but uh, so something's a good I'll guy. Be friends you know? with I mean, it's done this good. He's, he's got a little bit of the form attitude still, you know, so it's like a barrage of arguments. No, it was a very nice message. Yeah, he yeah. <laughs> but sometimes very nice message publicly, yeah. you know? but it's he's, he's I mean, he's very thoughtful and, and some and he talks things, respectfully. Yeah, yeah, it was nice. Yeah. And when yeah, a really lot of the supplements that are you know, common consensus in the industry now. He developed so astragalus root extract, citrus bergamot. I think he's the one that introduced it to the fitness industry. He may have introduced those yeah. two, and those and, two. and and cardotone as well. Even though cardotone doesn't always work, or IP six to reduce yes. iron intake, which sometimes leads to skewed uh, mean corpulus volume and uh, But he also uh, uses pycnogenol. He also uses, I'm going to talk to him about this because yeah. he mentioned them to me, astaxanthin, pycnogenol, those yeah. don't have very much evidence for them. He also spread the use of that and everybody's buying these useless supplements for no reason. Some but work, it, some but, don't work, yeah. But astragalus or astragalus and yeah. citrus bergamot, you're right, I think mm. he's the one. I he's the one that introduced it and then uh, Matt Jansen banked on it right away. And his, yeah, but, uh, but let's be clear. <laughs> let's be clear. Let's be clear about one thing. By the way, I have to, unfortunately, I have to yeah. go. I have another podcast, but uh, and we didn't get through. Okay, really quickly, let's say something about a Febu, sock, whatever, that uh, the other one. Mm. That one is cleared less by the kidneys. Okay. So some people are thinking that long term it may uh, cause less kidney dysfunction. I don't think that's really true. Mm. But uh, it's shown that in chronic kidney disease, stage three, mm. it doesn't lessen the progression to uh, later stages right. <clears throat> when you take it. However, Taking it without kidney disease, like among diabetics, mm -hmm. lessens the progression to kidney disease in the okay. first place. That's good. And it's the same for allopurinol. Yeah. Uh, I was going to mention something about the, oh yeah, citrus bergamot before we mm -hmm. go. Just want you guys to know something. When you see the LDL cholesterol lower, mm -hmm. well, LDL cholesterol may be debatable, but when you see the HDL cholesterol rise, mm -hmm. it does not mean that that rise will have an impact on, on your mortality or cardiovascular no. disease because... <laughs> That's the, that's the issue with citrus bergamot. We don't yeah. have any end, end studies. A lot of these bodybuilders take citrus bergamot. They say, oh, look mm -hmm. at my lipids. They're great. Well, they may be great, but it may be uh, superficial because this, mm -hmm. this is shown by the niacin studies the, that you know about. Those huge heavy yeah. dose niacin studies raised a lot of HDL cholesterol. There were people taking them for 10 years, mm -hmm. and then the studies showed no change in no mortality. Change in mortality yeah. So who knows? So I personally, I would never take citrus, citrus bergamot until you know what is your LDL, what's your HDL. Then you deal with with tools that are studied like statins mm. and then you could add citrus bergamot on top for fun which is i take citrus bergamot but i don't mm. rely on it i know what my hdl and, and ldl right. are like no of course you should still do your blood work and that kind of stuff but it's and and hdl and ldl is regulated by so many different things i just see it as an insurance policy to lower the risk slightly you know and, and yeah it exactly. You, exactly and, and of it course, might it might it has yeah, other benefits also it's certainly like it has other benefits as well look at it this way if ldl is going down that it's less potential for foam cells 